Hello, my name is Chris Woodpan. I'm the owner of Ingot Film Studios and I am working with Hero Time to make a bunch of videos to help you get your products ready for print. Now, let's talk a moment about backgrounds because I've seen some crazy backgrounds in my time and a lot of times we may want to say, drop a picture in there. Like this is just an op opacity picture set there. Um, you may want to throw a fancy gradient in here. Like, that's all fine and good until we start to do things and look at how these are represented. So let's hit Control Y. And this is a wonderful trick for you to check um, both alignment of objects. Uh, this converts it to an outline mode and just gets rid of all the other color information and everything. All right. so let's go over here to this box this this box is something a client had sent us well if i do a control y look at this when i said spaghetti this is what i'm talking about what this is is the computer has to draw meshes think of it like mountains um, of information to create a gradient and these gradients are pretty crazy if i look here it's not really doing a ton for the box sure it's giving it a little bit of a painterly look and everything but it's a little out of control so if you're using gradients and you want a painterly back the best thing you can do is maybe create it in photoshop and then just import the actual image itself let's say i decided to get rid of this whole thing I had that done in Photoshop. So if I'm going to drag this on here, the integrity of this image is going to be nice and high. Think of it around, you know, 400 dots per inch. And now let's go put our clipping mask on and we get the same effect. But when I do my Y, it's completely clean. It's a much cleaner, meaner way to work than it is to try and move all these mesh gradients around. Yes, they're amazing and they're awesome and they're very handy, but they can also really create a big mess on the back end when somebody's trying to work on your file. So avoid doing those. Uh, also avoid transparency with colors can really get very funky at times. So we want to try to make sure that transparency is usually 100%. And if you need to add transparency layers behind, again, that's probably a better job for Photoshop and then bring it in here. So join us next week. We're going to cover bringing those graphics and things into Illustrator. That way you can work with them and how to bounce back and forth. We'll cover that a little more in depth. So I hope you're enjoying the series and we'll see you soon.